Hello again, I am Blunty. Now, this just arrived on my desk. It's Raspberry Pi version 3 Model B specifically. It's something I've been wanting to have a go at for some time now. So when Bang It Good asked me to check this kit out, I said, okie dokie. Now to catch up for those who don't know, the Raspberry Pi is an ultra compact single board computer and hobbyists have turned it into all kinds of things from home automation to media centers, mini servers to games consoles. The latter which of course makes it particularly popular with those who like emulating classic gaming consoles. The kit I've got here comes with the main board, duh, a cooling fan, heat sinks and a clear acrylic case. What you need to supply is a USB power supply, little doubt you've got a drawer full of these by now, as I do. But there is a little gotcha you have to be mindful of here, and I'll come back to that in a moment. You'll also need a micro SD card to use as the system's drive. I just used a spare little 8GB one I had laying about. And of course something to hook it into, a TV or HDMI equipped monitor to use as the display. The processor inside is a Broadcom BCM2387 ARM Cortex-A53 quad-core processor which runs at up to 1.2GHz. There's also 1GB of RAM on board, a 40-pin connector for hooking I.O. into other hardware, and connectors for things like the Raspberry Pi camera module sold separately, and it can also support a special touchscreen display. Very cool for certain kinds of projects. For other basic accessories like keyboard and mouse and game controllers and whatever, there's four USB ports. A standard audio jack, it also can push out audio over HDMI of course, and a 10100 base T Ethernet port to quickly connect the Raspberry Pi to the internet. But if you'd rather go wireless, it even has 802.11bgn Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.1, including the low energy specification. For something so tiny and humble looking, it is packed full of stuff. Now, putting it all together is very straightforward, in fact, the kit and case assemble easily, the clear perspex case in this kit snaps together, no screws involved, and it does so nice and securely with some clever clutching tabs, but it is easy to get apart again if you ever need to. Basically, you're ready to go within a few minutes of opening the pack. My only real issue with this particular kit as it stands is the fan. Now, I wasn't surprised by this. Indeed, I was expecting the fan to be a bit on the noisy side, as all these teeny tiny fans are. And indeed, it is. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not like it screams or whistles or anything like that. Its mid-pitch whirring is a pleasant tone, but it is certainly loud enough to be noticeable. For a little perspective, this is what it sounds like when I talk over the top of it. So, as you can tell, not very, very loud, but certainly noticeable. You can actually run this thing completely fanless, depending on what you're doing with it. If it's a fairly low load kind of uh, situation, then it's not going to be generating much heat, and it can passively cool itself okay. But if you're really putting your boot into the ribs of this thing, a fan is something quite essential. Now, as for what I'm doing with it, well, of course, as an old school geek and gamer, my first instinct is to turn this thing into a mini game emulator and arcade machine. Perhaps I'll even build it right into an arcade stick. But there is also the temptation to turn it into a media center. There's certainly enough grunt here to locally decode and stream 1080p video without sweat. And it could make a pretty sweet little digital jukebox now that I think about it. Some other people have turned these things into anything from full-fledged laptops or a digital camera, even a photo booth for parties, that's a fun idea, surveillance systems, weather stations, network routers and instant VPNs and ad blockers for using their devices on untrusted networks, streaming internet radio devices. It has also been commonly used in schools as a way to teach programming to kids and there's even a version of Minecraft for it. The applications for this little bugger are broad and limited to by almost nothing but imagination. Everyone from kids to hardcore makers throw down with Raspberry Pis and they love them. And aside from the wonderful flexibility this microcomputer offers up, the next best part is they're cheap by design. This Banggood kit, for example, is just over 50 Yankee Doodle dollars. All you need to do is decide how you want to use it. Now, like I said, me, I'm thinking of building it into a mini arcade stick, or at least make a mini games console out of it. Once upon a time, I designed and built a huge four-player arcade cabinet. It was enormous. It was also impractical, but it was effing epic and endless fun. I'm thinking I'm going to make me a tiny tribute to those good old days and give me a cute little dedicated classic arcade game rig. 
Of course, I'm not the first to think of this, but still. The Raspberry Pi even has a special operating system distribution especially made for emulating games with an interface custom tailored just for it, even right down to being set up for navigation directly via a gamepad so you don't even need a mouse and keyboard except for the first time setup to do things like type in your Wi-Fi password. There are of course many different distributions of various operating systems and setups for the Pi. The one I'm using here is called RetroPie. And you can be up and running within minutes. Just copy the disk image across to a micro SD card, pop it in the Pi, boot, copy across your games, and go. But back to that little gotcha though I was talking about with the USB power supply. The first batch of testing I did with a bunch of games from a variety of systems, everything from Game Boy and Atari 2600 all the way up to Nintendo 64, PlayStation and PSP. And through all of it there was this little lightning bolt in the top corner. At no point are you clearly told what this means, but a quick Google revealed to me it's the Pi's way of letting me know that it's not able to pull all the juice at once from the USB power adapter I was using with it so it couldn't run at full speed. And for most stuff I was doing, this didn't even seem to affect it at all, until I got to the N64 games where there were some pretty severe performance issues, especially severe when more than one opponent was on screen in Smash Brothers, for example. <laughs> But as soon as I swapped out the USB power supply I was using for a properly rated 2.5 amp one, the Pi dug in its heels, span up its processor cores to full speed, and even without tweaking settings like resolution or choosing a different emulation core, Smash Brothers suddenly became very playable indeed. Not yet perfect, it must be said, there's still the occasional slowdown, but it's not nearly as severe or as crippling as it was. But like I alluded to, there's still tweaking to be done here to get this running smoother. The emulation station front end allows you to select different emulator cores or engines depending on which one you find works best for you in any given situation and what your priority is. Which in emulation often means finding a nice balance between emulation accuracy versus speed. But in general, the Raspberry Pi 3 version B has enough grunt out of box to let you do N64 without major issue. Everything below that ran basically perfectly without touching a single thing from the default setup of RetroPie. Your mileage will also vary when it comes to PlayStation and PSP, but X-Men vs Street Fighter on PlayStation ran perfectly well, so that makes Blunty a happy gamer over here. Heading forward, I am going to be more fiddling and experimenting with how things go at that end of the spectrum. Perhaps I'll do a follow-up video or two focusing exclusively on performance of various systems and various emulator calls and things like that, and the RetroPie experience in general. Let me know in my down below area if that's something you're into. Or, if you're a Pi enthusiast who has some tips about settings, tweaks, or emulator calls that I should be switching to, also please feel free to let me know. But at least for now, my core interests for this little guy, being 90s era stuff and arcade emulation via MAME, have all been working perfectly, so I'm very happy indeed. But this video is more about my out-of-box experience with the Raspberry Pi hardware itself. Now, of course, there are also kits that come with a USB power adapter, but of course, plug types vary across the world, which is why this kit doesn't do that, and it's why I selected it, because the foreign USB adapter that comes with the other kits wouldn't even work for me to begin with. And as I said before, the only thing I don't like is the fan's noise level, but once I build this into a permanent project home, again, perhaps directly into an arcade stick, because that's a super fun idea, it is a very simple issue to address to replace it with a quieter cooling solution. But for getting you up and running while you're setting things up, it works just fine. I love the clear case, simple, well made, and it's cool to be able to see the pie inside instead of just seeing a beige box or a black box or something boring like that. The kit does indeed get a thumbs up from me. It's a nice way to get up and running with the Raspberry Pi. There's no included instructions as to how the case snaps together, which caught me out, and there's a particular order to do that to make your life easier. Nor are you told where to plug in the included fan. There's no direct fan header on this thing, but you can pull appropriate voltage from a pair of the connectors on the 40 pin header. All you need is a little common sense to solve the first problem and a quick Google search for the pinouts to solve the second problem. And frankly, if you're unable to do that kind of basic problem solving off your own bat, then perhaps a retro pie based project is not for you. This is, of course, for hobbyists and tinkerers, people who want to solve their own problems. But now the question is, what would you folk do with this kit? Or indeed, again, for the pie veterans, what have you done with them? What do you plan to do with them in the future? Thanks for watching. I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.